to Song Study with Professor Presley. I am Professor Presley. Tonight we're going to be talking about Rain King uh, by Counting Crows. And it's one of my favorite songs of all time. I uh, first heard it on a bootleg that my friend Brad had loaned me. It was a Carving Out Our Names bootleg, I think. I think that was the first bootleg I'd ever heard in my life. I didn't even know what they were. Uh, but one of the best things about Counting Crows is that in when they're live, when, they're, in, when you see them live, They'll sometimes go off into alternate lyrics or they'll uh, improv or they will insert another song, somebody else's song, into their song. And uh, one of the my favorite things that they do is they will take Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen, best song ever composed, and smash it into the middle of of ranking. And it 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 lengthens the story. It changes the story in a way in a way. Uh, it gives it a new life and uh, you'll be going one direction with the story and then it'll go another way. And of course music and art and all of these subjective things are uh, they are specifically about one thing and then they are about whatever they are about to you. But when you take Thunder Road which is this iconic imagery of someone basically they're they're facing the same thing that Henderson, the Rain King, is facing in in the book by Saul Bellow, that uh, Rain King is inspired by. Uh, it, it's 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 facing this idea of responsibility, right? And it's that uh, it's a coming of age, and then when you get when you come of age, you have to stay of age, and that's the part that nobody ever tells you is like, you know, once you you know once you once you once you get out of all of the trouble or all the things that you were in, you're still got to live the rest of your life. And so, uh, this is, this is like, it's the, that one last chance song, you know, like this is what we're going to do before we die. Sort of a thing. Um, when I think of heaven, deliver me in a black winged bird. I think of flying down into a sea of pins and feathers and all other instruments of faith and sex and God in the belly of a black winged bird. And then you smash Thunder Road in the middle of it. And what's his vessel in there? It's a car. What if it's black? What if it's Thunderbird, a bird evoking car? Uh, uh, Cadillac's birds? No. <laughs> but you, you, you see, in the when I think of heaven, deliver me in a black winged bird. I think of flying. The screen door slams. And Mary's dress waves. And like a vision, she dances across the porch as the radio plays. Roy Orbison, singing for the lonely. Hey, that's me, and I want you only. Don't run back inside, darling. You know you're just what I'm here for. So you're scared, and you're thinking that maybe we ain't that young anymore. Well, show a little faith there's magic in the night. You ain't a beauty, but hey, you're all right. And that's all right with me. You could hide beneath your covers and study your pain, make crosses from your lovers, throw roses in the rain, waste your summer praying in vain for a savior to rise from these streets. Listen, I ain't no hero, but that's understood. All the redemption I could offer, girl, is beneath this dirty hood. And the chance to make it good somehow, well, what else can we do now? Except roll down the windows and let the wind blow back your hair. It's the night's busted open. These two lanes will take us anywhere. We got one last chance to make it real. To trade in these wings on some wheels. Climbing back, baby. Heaven's waiting down the tracks. Take my hand. We're riding out tonight to case the promised land. Out on the Thunder Road. I got this guitar and I learned how to make it talk. And my car's out back. If you're ready to make that long, long walk. From your front porch to my front seat, 
The door is open, but the ride, it ain't free. And tonight you are lonely for words that I haven't spoken, but tonight we'll be free. I promise this will be broken. Is there a ghost in the eyes of all the boys you sent away? They haunt this dusty beach road in the skeleton frames of burnt, burned out Chevrolets. And they scream your name at night in the streets. <clears throat> Graduation lies in rags at their feet. And in the lonely cool before dawn, you'll hear their engines roaring on. And when you get to the porch, they're gone on the wind. So, Mary, my man, this is a town full of losers. Pulling out of here to win. So is that Thunder Road? Is that a highway to uh, to heaven? Uh, if you've ever gotten in <clears throat> compose, <laughs> if you've ever gotten to the to a car with your one true love and loaded up your playlist or packed in the stories of your life and drove off to learn about each other. It's just about as close to heaven as you can get. And as many of those experiences that you can have, then you can place them inside of songs and access them later. And if that song, that song doesn't have to match your life, doesn't have to match your situation, doesn't have to match the things you're doing, but it's a good way to hold on to it. It's a good way to feel it, right? When I think of heaven, I think of dying. Lay me down in a field of flame and heather. Render out my body into the burning heart of God, the belly of a black winged bird. I'm driving. Fields of agriculture around you. <laughs> you see those rows, you know? As they pass by. And then it starts to look like a, like a film strip. And it helps you begin to imagine things that are there, maybe. Maybe all those thoughts are gone on the wind. Maybe the black winged bird is the song. So climb on in. So maybe, maybe in the end, that black bean, <clears throat> so maybe in the end, that black winged bird is a song. And that song is right there in your hand. <laughs> so, climb on in. We're riding out tonight to Case the Promised Land on the Thunder Road. I don't know, it meant something to me. Thanks for watching. Fucking love you. <laughs> oh, wear your seatbelt. Subscribe, tell people, you know.
a Paris hotel room. Circa 2006. The night was longer than it had seemed. Slow and tilting to a crease. My eyes began to wonder where the water would be. And then the call came. Over my electronic periscope attached to my shoulder. A copper ring I spoke into. I was verified. And then the doors opened. I worked nights in an opulent hotel room in the middle of one, the city of lights. Six, nine, zero. I'm no one. Seven, zero. I don't even have a name. One. Six, one, six, one. Six. And there she was. The ingenue. The life. Blonde, flowing hair. Like a goddess. Like a Lord of the Rings queen. like a painting in a basement in Manitou Springs long, long ago, melting in a rainwater, seeping into the ground, fading away into a distant sound that echoed upon my memories. And there she was, platinum in every way, platinum to the core. She wasn't the first queen that I had seen, nor was she the last. But dear God, she shined. Light flows slower through a diamond. At least I think that's true. And if it is, then she must be a diamond. Because light set upon her skin like the dew of morning grass in a memory where I laid with no memories of pain or suffering or sorrow or loss or sadness or adulthood. And there she was. Immediately, a song rang through my ears. The elevator doors head open to a place I had not been. At least not in this way. It was a private elevator made only for the family of the queen. And though this was simply a princess, an empress she would be, for it was already there No one had given it the name. I stretched out my white gloved hand.
My sword I turned to the side. Pardon this machinery, I said. She looked down and looked back up. Her eyes rose upon me like an elevator, as an elevator, in an elevator, a lift, a cue to the sky, a wonk of Vader. Dear God, she ruptured my senses. And you are, she said. I didn't speak. It's a weird thing I do. Whenever someone speaks to me before they know me, I take a long pause and wait for anyone. Do it for the president. You'll see what it does. It gives you time. I waited. I know you heard me. I'm not sure what this power struggle thing is that you're doing. There's no need for it. I mean you no harm. Dear God, she read me. This is to say that she had not been greeted with such honesty and tell to the tabloid world out on the sands. Out there in the legete, out there in the sky, Out there long, long beyond the Lafon. She was there. I was there. A time and place in history that will never exist again. A time and place in history that never existed before. A pinpoint, a singularity. There we stood. The gap of what could have been a million floors between us. I stood there. and told her my name. I did not think it meant much. She took my hand. I pulled her aboard as gently as if lifting an orchid to transplant. Gently. As if I held the answer to the world. She was aboard. The direction we went, I'll never tell. The things we saw, I'll never forget. The door to her palace stretched to the sky. Emerald and gold all around. Not chipped, not stolen, not plundered. Cared for. Preserved. Gold preserved. Platinum she was. And her face to the world a different than she was about to give to me. We stood at her door. Her eyes sparkling blue. 
long, deep, platinum blue. Get used to that word, brain, I thought. The platinum blue will be with you forever. Dear God, there she was. I awoke in that moment. There at her door. My hand she took again to step over the gap. The corridor. Lit in a way as if magic hurled itself against the wall. In shame and reverence. The floor. Steps of cobblestone. Gems. Arkin stones. Things I'd never seen. Things that never were. At the door. There she was. We stood for a moment. Drenched in terror, I did not know what I should do. I had seen her kind before, but never up close. I've heard stories of the lilacs now. I've heard lies of the common hood that they really are. But I had truly met a seraphim. Siren to some, broken to the ignorant, the thing I saw before me. Ethereal. Ah, oh, my Europa. She asked me. No, she demanded me to have the courage and not try to steal the power. I had no clue what she meant. And in the 30 years in between, I remember everything.